Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome to Night of Worship. Yeah, we ready to go tonight? Let's go. Hey, uh, let's go ahead and stand up in the room. Uh, we're gonna jump right in tonight, but I just wanted to take a moment and, and give you a little bit of behind the scenes, kind of what our team has been praying over and what we've been thinking about and what we feel like God wants for tonight in us and all of us together in our church. Um, we started with this idea of that we wanna be reminded. We wanna be reminded of who God is, that he's good, that he's faithful, that he loves us, that like this next song, the first song says that, that our battle belongs to him, that our victory has been won because of who he is, because of what he's done that we can cling to that, we can know that that's true. And so that's where it kind of started, but it, it kind of evolved from there because there's a reality that we can show up on a Friday night at 7.30 and we can sing some songs, whether you're online in the room, we can sing songs and we can believe them and we can like raise our hands and get really excited. But there's something different about believing that all of those things are enough for us. That no matter what we're walking through, no matter what you're standing in tonight, that God's love is enough that his goodness is enough, that his victory is enough, and that in whatever battle you face, whatever you're walking through, that he is enough for you right here in this moment, but also in every single moment. So our hope tonight is these songs would be a declaration. Yes, a declaration right now, but it would sink so deep that when we walk out of those doors, we believe them, we hold on to them, we cling to them, and we know that they're true, and we know that God is enough. So let's go after that tonight. Let's sing this song together. The chorus goes like this. When I fight, I fight on my knees With my hands lifted high Oh God, the battle belongs to you Every fear I lay at your feet And I sing through the night Oh God, the battle belongs to you. Come on, he sees a victory. When all I see is the battle, you see my victory. When all I see is a mountain, you see a mountain move. And as I walk through the shadow, your love surrounds me. There's nothing to fear now, for I am safe with you. Come on, church, we sing it out. So when I fight. So when I fight, I'll fight on my knees With my hands lifted high Oh God, the battle belongs to you And every fear I lay at your feet And I sing through the night Nothing impossible for you. We know it's true. When all I see are the ashes, you see the beauty. When all I see is a cross, God, you see an empty tomb. That's why I can say. So when Nothing can stand against the power of our God. 
you shine in the shadows you win every battle nothing can stand against the power of our god almighty fortress you go before us nothing can stand against the power
That's our prayer tonight. We want to be where you are. I pray, God, that our eyes will be open to see you all around us, not just right here, right now, but in the midst of our lives, in the very fabric of our lives, that you are present, you are here, and that when we call upon your name, we can be sure that you will answer. In our response to your faithfulness, Jesus, is that we declare that in our lives, that in this church, in this body, that you would be lifted most high. 
no matter what happens, no matter what circumstances or trials may come to us, Father, you will be lifted high in our lives. So God, we give you all of us as we continue to worship you tonight. I pray, God, that we would keep that in mind, that you would be lifted high in our lives. We thank you, Jesus. Amen. You guys can have a have a seat uh, for just a minute. Um, we don't uh, thank you guys so much uh, for leading us um, tonight. Um, you know, it's it's always interesting. It's it's, it's always a privilege uh, for me to be able to be a part of of this tonight um, to lead us in communion. And you always hear stories about people coming up into, uh, into our churches. They have different experiences in church and some have had really tough experiences in church and other people have uh, walked away from those experiences or whatever it might be. And so sometimes the, the more, um, <clears throat> the rituals of the church have been hard uh, for people. So we wanna kind of address that tonight and kind of walk you through um, through that night. But I wanna just pause as we kind of set up when we, when we we gather to sing, y'all know that this is not like a logical, practical thing to do. It's not like an efficient thing to gather and like sing songs. You know, you're, you're feeling something, right? Is that what we're, that's what's happening? No, just me? Okay, so like you, you move and you clap and you kind of, and, and you, you feel something. And the, the lyrics and the, um, what we just sang paints a picture and it's different for, for all kinds of, of people in the room. I was sitting here thinking earlier, we were, uh, we were, uh, I was in here while they were uh, going through it earlier, and I love the song, Lord's in Revival, and it says, like, fling, uh, open the gates, and let heaven break out. And in my upbringing, the gates of heaven were really far away, and for heaven to break out looks like frenzied chaos, people falling out, whatever your vision of that is. And there's a picture in your head, and you have to say, okay, God, is this the picture? And what I realize is when we say, Lord, send revival. Lord, send it now. It's a move of your spirit. Heaven break out. You realize it is not that far away. Like when we saying that Jesus, you know, we want to be where you are. He is here and he has brought the kingdom here. And for those gates to be flung open isn't a distant thing there. It's right here in front of us. When you think about a picture of, you know, Lord, send revival. Lord, send, you know, let, let it break out in, in the land. We, 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 we think, because we grew up in America, that we're thinking America. But there's a, there's a better picture that when they talked about this idea of space and land, it was where your feet are, would be the sort of way you would think about it biblically. So heaven breaks out wherever our feet are. It's the land. Revival happens wherever our feet are. It's the place. This is what Jesus has made available to us. And we need places like this and spaces like this for us to reorient and to realign. And, and God has given us this, um, this, this uh, ordinance of the Lord's Supper, of communion, um, in order to remember to enter in. Um, one of the other lines that we sang, again, these are just imagery. There's this imagery that, we, that, that I think these songs and when we worship that are put in our heads and and they're putting our heads to awaken our hearts to things. To have us lifted up out of the clay and set on a rock. That's a quote from the Psalms. And the miry clay that holds you back is all the stuff that you keep getting stuck in every single day, day after day. You may have that. You have the same emotions, the same struggles, day after day after day. And he picks you up and he sets you on the rock and you feel it for a moment and it feels like you're back in the clay the next day or sometimes the next moment. And it's, he, he always reaches in and he picks us up and he sets us up on the rock. And what he has done for us, and I think what we often underestimate. And again, I'm just gonna kind of keep using the lines from the song because this was my experience back there listening and worshiping and trying to align myself and to reorient myself with things that are consistent with the kingdom and consistent with what it would look like for me to live under the lordship of the king. And this is, what the, this is what this is about. And so one of the other things that says, healed and forgiven, look where my chains are now. Do y'all remember singing that? Did you feel it? Like, where are your chains? Where are they? For some of you, you're holding on to them. You're holding on to them. He says, healed and forgiven. Where are they? 
Some of you tonight, when you kind of take communion, you need this to be the sort of, this is a moment, you know, you, 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 uh, you have these ordinances, these moments to sort of mark a moment, not so much to say, oh, from now on, I'm never going to do this again. Because if you think that you take communion tonight, you're never going to feel like you're in the miry clay again. You're kidding yourself. You're probably going to feel like it tomorrow. What you have to remind yourself of is that he continues, there's a rock underneath us that can support everything that we deal with and endure. And there's a sure and a certain covenant that when we say that we are healed and forgiven, what this means is that God came to take care of the thing that separates you from Him. From him. He came to take our sin to the grave so it never again has hold or authority in your life. Never once and for all. There is no greater news than that. To save sinners is what Jesus came to do. That means that we have been delivered and set free and we have been, been recreated new. And then the challenge for us is to actually live in the newness. Like the reason we hold on to our chains is because they're sometimes comfortable. We've gotten used to them and he's inviting us into a new way of life. And no matter how freeing a new way of life is, it's still new and it makes it uncertain and it requires something from us. And this is why we need to continually reorient. We were talking about this last night that the formation of Jesus's character into our lives is a slow, arduous process, right? Slower than most of us would want, right? And if we're really honest, it's slower in the lives of other people than we really want because if they would be formed a little quicker, it'd make our lives a little easier, right? We can at least get behind that. And it's just, but here's the, here's the other part of why this is so important, what we're gonna do in just a moment is so important. Because formation is not neutral. We were just talking about this last night. We've been talking about this kind of internally with our staff. Formation is not neutral. Everything that you do forms you. You get up in the morning, you get before the Lord, and you're like, God, use this day, I surrender. And then you go to work, right? That moment forms you, but so does going to work. So does sitting in traffic. It forms you, it shapes you, it does something to you. This week has shaped some of you. It's done something to your heart and it's done something to your soul. And so tonight we come back to kind of conclude this week in this way to reorient ourselves and to remind ourselves not to do better, not to go, oh, that's a bad week. We're going to do better next week. To declare and to believe and to reorient ourselves to the fact that we have been healed and we have been forgiven and we have been set free. That's what we are reminded of. The new covenant, the new covenant means that once and for all, your sins have been paid for. And now the hard part is to believe that that is true in spite of the things that you do. And that's what we're gonna be reminded of, enter into. And so what I wanna, what I wanna do is I'm, I, I, I've, I've tried to think about tonight a, a million different ways and I tried to come up with something, but like, I'm just gonna give you a tease for what we're gonna talk about on Sunday. I want to do this because I, for those of you who are here and you'll come back Sunday, you're going to hear this a little bit differently um, on Sunday. But I closed with this passage last week. And it says this. <clears throat> it says, whatever things were gained to me, this is from Philippians chapter two. Whatever things were gained to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found, with, found in Him. And that's beautiful language, but if we're honest, it's a little fearful because we have a lot of things that we don't consider rubbish. We consider them really valuable and really important, and we don't want anything to happen to them. And that's all normal and fine. And there's this picture that's painted. I want to know Christ. I want to know the power of his resurrection, participation in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, and so somehow attaining the resurrection from the dead. And as I've read this over and over and over again, here's what has historically jumped out at me. Consider everything lost. Um, 
Whatever is gain, I consider loss. All of it's rubbish, and it just feels, oh, how am I ever gonna get there? And then I'm reading this, and it says, I consider everything lost because of something really, really important. And that is the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus. And here's what I want us to reflect on as we take communion. There is a surpassing value in knowing Christ Jesus is Lord. Now, we go, okay, I want us to think about this. If I said, I want to get you a brand new car, you'd be like, oh, yes. There's a surpassing value in that. It would make you sit here the rest of the time and go, can't wait till we leave so I can get my new car. Right? You would start to want that more than you want to be where you are, whatever it is. Or something other good news that's going to be promised to you and something that you value is going to be given to you. You start to see that, and that brings a sense of hope that makes you look for and want and desire that causes everything else to have a little bit different perspective. you see what I'm saying? Does that make sense? So what this, what this promises us is that there, there is a surpassing value in knowing Christ Jesus that's actually available. That for your relationship with Jesus, for my relationship to be Jesus, to become so valuable that it surpasses everything else. So don't worry about what you're going to lose. Or don't worry about the challenge of losing something. What I want us to focus on is the fact that the relationship that God has invited you into, that has been made available to you in Christ Jesus, has a worth and a value that surpasses everything else. And what if that were to be true for you? Like, that's what we're invited into, and that's our quest, and what we're saying, God, we wanna see more and more and more of you so that we know you in such a way that it surpasses everything else. Right? So, I'm gonna pray for us. Actually, I'm gonna let's just let God speak to us. And then um, I'll invite our host team in just a moment. We're gonna come and we're gonna, um, you'll get, uh, the host team will lead you and you will get, um, there's, there's a cup, but it's got two things in it. You'll see this. Um, one has the bread and the other has uh, the juice. And so you'll get one and they're both in there. Um, and here's one more thing I wanna say. Some of you, um, you grew up in a tradition where you weren't allowed to take communion for a variety of reasons. Uh, there are traditions that say if you've been divorced, you're not allowed at the table, or if you have something has happened. What we say, right, our priest has replaced all other priests. He is the high priest who is King Jesus, and he is the one who has invited us. So if, if you in your here have said, yes, he is my king. Yes, I receive his forgiveness. The only person who needs, who you need to hear invite you to come is him. You don't need anyone else to affirm it for you, okay? Can we, can we be okay with that? So I don't want you to feel shame. I don't want you to feel hesitation. I don't want you to feel um, excluded. Some of you need this reminder that something has been done for you in such a way that nothing you can do can undo it. And so you're gonna sort of hold on to that. For some of you, this is a new start because you're struck, you just feel, and you just need to kind of mark a moment tonight. Not a promise to do better, just a fundamental trust that something has been done that is powerful enough to heal you and to forgive you and to bring you into the life for which you have been created. That's what we celebrate. That's what we do. That's what Jesus invites us to. And he said, this is my body which is broken for you. To forgive you for sin once and for all. And this is the cup of the new covenant. That when you drink it, you declare that sacrifice and the reality of the new covenant 
from here until we experience it fully and finally. So I'm going to stop. God, I just ask you to use these next few moments to remind us. God, there are all sorts of different things that people need to be reminded. For some, it's just a gentle reminder of hope. And they've heard whispers and reminders of shame for far too long. God, for others, it's just a foundation, a footing, because everything feels to be slipping out from underneath them. So I just ask you to whisper to us as we kind of gather and share this together. So lift all of this to you in the name of your son, Jesus. I want to invite our host team to come and to lead us as we, um, you'll grab the elements, head back to your seats, and we'll all take it together in just a moment.
I think we're good. It says, whatever things were gained to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. And what is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. It is an unbelievable thing for us to consider that we could have a relationship with him that causes everything else to pale. It's available. It's available. Um, It's no mistake that Jesus did this um, when he did celebrating Passover, the deliverance from slavery of the Hebrew people. And the disciples were like, what is he doing? And he talks about his body being broken and they didn't understand, but they would just a few days later. But what he said was so um, beautiful and prophetic is this is my body which is broken, torn to pieces, I mean, torn apart, cut, bruised. And um, as the final sacrifice, so that every other attempt to earn or to offer for sin would be void because he did it. And so we take and we eat in remembrance of him. Then he took the cup and the the cup in the covenant was um, another rich symbol, beautiful. And it had to do with weddings and a lot of other sort of symbolism of that day. But the the bottom line is that to receive a, 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 um, a covenant, to accept a covenant, wasn't just signing your name like we do today. You would drink a cup because you can't like undo that you and not only can you not undo it you're 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 not just saying yes to something you're 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 taking it in to the very depths of who you are and so this is the picture of the new covenant that he says oh there's a day coming when there's gonna be a new covenant where i will write my law upon their hearts and there will be no need for them to be taught because they will know, they will live in an intimate knowledge, an intimate connection with the way. And then he says, I will remember their sins no more. That's what the new covenant is. And so he says, take it in to the deepest parts of who you are. And as you do, remember that it's a true, real, abiding thing. One more thing before we sing some more. Um, There's a line in this song, and it says, I'm already loved. I'm already chosen. I know who you are. I know what you've spoken. So when you sing that, I want for you to recognize how often we try to say, oh God, if you love me, you know, or here's, and just go, it's already done. And just receive it. I'm already loved. I'm already chosen. I trust what it is that you say because what you have done is enough. All right? That's what we're going to do. Carlos, Olivia.
nothing I can do to make you well. It doesn't take a trophy to make you proud. I'll never be more loved than I am right now. Going through a storm, but I won't go down. I hear your voice carried in the rhythm of the wind to call me out. You would cross the ocean, so I would entrust.
You go before I know that you've even gone to win my war. Your love becomes my grave and leads me from the
shout your praise Our hearts will cry These bones will say Great are you Lord We sing all the earth will shout your praise Our hearts will cry Church, it's been such an incredible, incredible night. Uh, we hope that you have enjoyed yourself, but more than that, we hope that you've encountered your Heavenly Father tonight, that you've encountered His goodness, that you've encountered His faithfulness, that you've encountered His love, that you've been reminded of those things, and beyond that, you've been reminded that He is more than enough than anything you could ever face and anything you could ever, ever walk through. And so we hope you've been encouraged tonight. We hope that we walk through those doors, clinging to this, knowing these truths, knowing who our God is and believing that and living that in and through our lives. We hope you have a great weekend, and we will see you guys on Sunday.